all of us have particular styles of behavior and ways in which we relate to one another. Some of us are shy, others are more social. Some of us are orderly, some of us are more sloppy. When these behavior patterns become inflexible and maladaptive, and now remember, that's what's really important about psychological um, um, disorders is that they're maladaptive. They interfere with the regular functioning of a normal day. So when they become that maladaptive that they cause significant personal distress and impair functioning in the social you know, or occupational realms the, with your friends or you know, at work, their behavior patterns may be diagnosed as a personality disorder. So it's an important feature to pay attention to um, is distress in one's personal life, socially, occupationally, um, relationships, um, not just the little things that might interfere with getting through the day, but you manage to get through fine and every day is kind of, you know, a, a reasonable day. All right, let's carry on with this chapter. All right, let's start with the psychodynamic perspective. And if we consider the traditional Freudian theory, it focuses on the unresolved edible complex in explaining normal and abnormal personality development. Uh, more recent psychodynamic theorists have focused on the pre-Oedipal period in explaining the development of such personality disorders as narcissistic and borderline. But we're going to focus predominantly on these more current ones. Now, uh, Hans uh, Kohut, um, he looked at self-psychology as a focal point, and most of his work was related to narcissistic personality where he saw that the early childhood health narcissism, which he would describe as the world that revolves around the child, parents reflect back to child nourish nourishing support of self-esteem, always giving positive feedback. Eventually, later in childhood, this childhood narcissism gives way to realistic appraisals of self and others. Children don't receive empathy and support from their parents, develop a source. Children that, sorry, I'm going to repeat that. Children that don't receive empathy and support from their parents develop lower self esteem, which could lead to feelings of inadequacy. Pathological narcissism involves constructing a grandiose facade, or a cloak, if you will, of perfection, constantly working on it and the risk of it crumbling if they don't, so they work very hard to hold that up. So that's the self-psychology perspective. Now, Otto Kernberg, he looked at what was known as splitting, where most of the work with the borderline personality uh, individual, uh, a child's failure to synthesize or put together all the contradictory m images of good and bad results in a failure to develop a consistent self-image. Therefore, you establish a splitting image, if you will, multiple, and moving back and forth between seeing yourself as all good or seeing yourself as all bad. Now, Margaret uh, Mahler, she involved what was called a symbiotic, uh, views the relationship between um, infant and the mother as symbiotic or an independence, interdependence between each other, and the child identifies identity gets fused with the mother, joined if you will. Slowly children differentiate their own identity and a sense and their own sense of self from their from their mothers. That's the separation individualization or individuation. But failure to do that separation is viewed as an underlying clause, uh, cause for borderline personality. Now this is just a psychodynamic perspective. We can lean into the um, learning perspectives and learning theorists, they view personality disorders in terms of maladaptive behavior patterns, and that's a common theme for the learning perspective. Rather than personality traits, learning theorists seek to identify the early learning experiences and present reinforcers that may explain and explain the development and maintenance of personality disorders. And so it's largely, and you'll find this to be consistent throughout most of the disorders we'll discuss, it's around learning certain skill sets or certain maladaptive behaviors early in life and then later uh, adapting them into adult life. The family perspective 
This um, group of therapists um, or theorists, they argue that disturbed family relationships plays an important role in the development of many personality disorders. Um, antisocial personality disorder is connected with parental rejection or neglect and parental modeling and antisocial behavior. And so they look at the roles of family and again, you know, there, there's no correct recipe for successful parenting. However, there are certainly, you know, broad strokes of things you should do and broader strokes about things you shouldn't do. And certainly early childhood experiences with family can have a big impact on the development of uh, psychological disorders. And it's important to note here that this is not the cause that you can't blame all psychological disorders on parents. It is only a part of that puzzle. Let's move on to cognitive behavioral perspectives. The cognitive um, um, theory, they, they focus more on problem solving um, therapy where the role of, of encoding strategies into explaining tendencies of antisocial adolescents to, pres to presume that others mean them ill. In a sense, coming up with changing old thinking into new results and problem solving to new solutions uh, can help people get to the other side. And so this is often one that works in, colla in, in collaboration with often with biological uh, using medication to manage some of the aspects and using cognitive or learning to compensate and um, complement biological. We'll look at the biological and here the research on biological perspectives have shown a family link in various uh, personality disorders that are consistent with but don't prove a genetic means of transmission and the twin studies that have been done seem to lend itself to this direction and again it's not cause and effect but it's showing some tendencies of genetic variability to psychological disorders. Now some research uh, evidence shows that people with antisocial personality not only lack the emotional responsiveness to physically threatening, threatening stimuli, but they also have reduced levels of autonomic reactivity. People with antisocial personalities may also require high levels of stimulation to maintain optimum levels of arousal. Now the research done by Jeffrey Gray looks at reinforcement sensitivity theory and it focuses on three neuropsychological systems. Now the growing research is uh, from molecular genetics and neuroimaging studies and it's been very promising. First there's the behavioral um, approach system, the BAS, and this is the sensitivity to and anticipates in the anticipation of rewards, that particular system. The flight fright freeze system or the FFS system, this is the fear response to a punishing stimuli. And then there's the third system which is behavioral inhibition system, the BIS, where a sensitivity to the potential conflicts causes, uh, caused by the expected rewards and punishment in a situation. But what's been interesting is they've been able to watch through brain imaging to see which systems get activated and it makes, it's showing some promise in, in understanding um, psychological disorders. Now the sociocultural theorists, they focus on adverse uh, social conditions. So the things that can go on in our social life that can impact our own personal development. And they may contribute to the development of personality disorders, especially antisocial personality disorders. Now the effects of things like poverty, um, urban blight, uh, drug abuse that can lead to family disorganization, um, uh, disintegration, uh, that is the breaking down of the family through drug and alcohol abuse, uh, making it less likely that children will receive uh, the nurturance, the support uh, to help them develop more socially adaptive and beha uh, behavior patterns. And so these stressors are associated with increased likelihood of child abuse, child neglect, which can in turn contribute to lower self-esteem, anger, resentment, lack of empathy, and a callous disregard for the feelings of others, essentially antisocial personality. All right, there we are. We're done another part. 
treatment will follow. And uh, I hope this has been an interesting uh, topic. Carry on the good work, everybody.